Good morning, everyone. Our opening sentence today from James chapter 1. The Father brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Please join in our processional hymn number 447. Lord, we hear your word with gladness. Please stand. Welcome. Please be seated. Welcome to St. Stephen's Anglican Church. My name is Chris Dowdswell. I am the priest here. Welcome to those who are gathered here in person. It's great to be here, and it's great to be together virtually online with those at home, whether online or by telephone. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to all those who have helped put our service together. Val on our sides. Uh, Russ, our lay reader. Lenis on Zoom. Ray helping on our soundboard. Uh, Colin, great to have you back as a reader. Uh, Amy has selected our music for today, and thank you, Verna, for filling in on our organ. Uh, Michael and Erica, our vocalists, and Gloria on Altar Guild. Our liturgy is the work of the people, and so it's not only these uh, faithful folks behind the scenes, but all of us gathered here together who contribute our prayers as we lift up God's name. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope, one God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. Please join in our hymn, Create in Me a Clean Heart. Please stand. Renew a right spirit. 
Please be seated for our first reading. Actually, before we do that, I will say our collect of the day. Author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us in all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now we'll invite Colin up to bless us with our first reading. Our first reading comes from Songs of Songs, uh, 2 verses 8 to 13. I hear my lover's voice. He comes running over the mountains, racing across the hills to me. My lover is like a gazelle, like a young stag. There he stands beside the wall. He looks in through the window and glances through the lattice. My lover speaks to me. Come then, my love, my darling, come with me. The winter is over. The rains have stopped. In the countryside, the flowers are in bloom. This is the time for singing. The song of doves is heard in the fields. Figs are beginning to ripen. The air is fragrant with blossoming vines. Come then, my love, my darling, come with me. The word of the Lord. Our psalm appointed for today is Psalm 45. I invite you to respond with the underlined verses. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is thirst for God, a thirst for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? Put your trust in God, for I will yet give thanks to him is the help of my countenance and my God. My soul is heavy within me. Therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from the peak of Mizar among the heights of Hermon. One deep calls to another in the noise of your cataracts. All your rapids and floods have gone over me. The Lord grants his loving kindness in the daytime. In the night season his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. So 
sorry for the mix up. I see uh, we had a different psalm on the screen. We'll invite Colin back up for a second reading. Our second reading comes from James 1, verses 17 to 27. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, Take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the world planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word does, but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world, the word of the Lord. Please stand for our gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You have let go of the commandments of God and are holding on to the traditions of men. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands? He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. 
Their teachings are merely human rules. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. Again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles them. For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I speak to you today in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In our gospel reading today, we have a story about the religious leaders confronting Jesus about he and his disciples not washing their hands before eating. And Jesus responds, basically saying that what is more important than outer cleanliness is inner cleanliness. It is tempting for us Christians to think that Jesus was abolishing the Old Testament laws and instead showing us a new and better and more spiritual way. But that is not what Jesus is doing in our reading today. It is essential for us to understand that the cleanliness laws of the Old Testament were the science of the day. They were the ways that the Israelite people made sense of their world and how to thrive in it how to be clean and holy and healthy in relationship with God and their community. That's what it means to be righteous. It means to be in right relationship. So Jesus wasn't condemning the science of the day, but reminding the religious leaders of the fuller truth of their tradition. And he even quotes the prophet Isaiah to make the point that a holy and clean and healthy inner life is the true source of a holy and clean and healthy outer life. The Jewish leaders had forgotten this truth of their tradition, this deeper truth of their science of the day, and Jesus was reminding them of it. Now, since the Jewish purity laws were the science of the day, we are right to update them with our modern scientific understanding. We draw from modern science today in our theologizing with two caveats. The modern science is both more trustworthy and less trustworthy than the science of the day was back in biblical times. First, modern science is more trustworthy because the modern scientific method is an amazingly robust key for unlocking useful truths about the world when it is followed precisely. The scientific method of today is way more trustworthy than the scientific method of 2000 years ago. But second, we're also right to consider it less trustworthy than the science of the day during biblical times, because we no longer treat the science of the day as a kind of infallible divine revelation. There's much more that can be said about both of those topics, but rather than going further off on that tangent, let's turn back to our gospel reading and look at it with fresh eyes as a debate over the science of the day. We are told in our story that the experts and those well studied in the science of the day saw Jesus and the disciples not following proper hand washing procedures. What the science said was the way to be clean and healthy individuals in order to ensure healthy relationships with God and with their community. Because that is what being clean and righteous has always meant to be healthy and in healthy relationships with God and a person's community. So Jesus and the disciples are people who appear not to be following the science of the day, which was meant to benefit the community, and the community then calls them out on it. 
Now, you all know that I am a fervent pro-vaccine advocate. My family and I have been vaccinated, and I try to convince people in my real life and on social media to become vaccinated all the time. There's a part of me that wants to side with the experts in this story today and to cheer when Jesus and the disciples seem to be ostracized from their community for not following the science. But maybe there's a corrective in this reading. For those of us who are pro-vaccine here today, maybe the corrective for us is a reminder of a deeper truth, that true health at its heart means a healthy community life, and that the cleanliness that leads to true health and community is not just to be found in a kind of outer cleanliness, but in our inner cleanliness. Perhaps we people who are pro-vaccine are to be reminded to check the attitudes of our hearts towards those who are hesitant about being vaccinated, even if we believe that there are all kinds of good scientific and moral reasons to be vaccinated. Perhaps us pro-vaccine people today are called to set a different model of relationship with those whom this world deems unclean, to open ourselves up and to be in real relationship with them, the kind of relationship where we are physically present to one another. Because if this pandemic has taught us anything about relationships, it's that they struggle greatly when we are not physically present with one another. Now, I'm not telling anyone to be reckless about COVID safety. Those who are immunocompromised need to stay safe. But I am saying that divisions about vaccination status are ripping the fabric of our community apart, and that the church can and should be a model of loving community to our world. That is why regular church attendance is so revolutionary. It is a statement that we refuse to be blown apart by all the forces of this world that say certain people are not worth our time, certain people are not clean, certain people are dangerous, and therefore we should stay far away from them. Relationship, true relationship, always has and always will hold risks for those who choose to seek it in this world, and that will never change. But we have reached a point in this pandemic where we can open ourselves in relationship again without it being an unreasonable amount of risk. Regular church attendance is important and valuable precisely because it is the risks we encounter in relationships with God and one another that lead to our inner growth. We open ourselves up to the challenges of those relationships. But the more consistent and committed we are in those relationships, the safer the space is for those challenges to be encountered and growth to happen through them. We need to commit to one another to love one another through thick and thin, through the times of affirmation as well as the times of correction. It is only in that kind of community that people feel safe to change because they know that they will continue to be accepted as they make those inner changes. So today, come to the Lord's table and share communion with those that the world might label unclean. This is what Jesus' whole ministry was about, breaking down barriers between the clean and the unclean. These kinds of acts of faith, these inner choices that we make to prioritize relationship, these movements to break down barriers in our church and world, these are acts that truly wash us clean. They give us that inner washing that Jesus spoke about today, and we are all better for it. So whether you've washed your hands or not, come. Come in love to the Lord's table. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand. 
And join with me as we say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'd like to invite Russ to lead us in our prayers of the people. Today our prayers are special prayers for our back to school blessing. Uh, I invite you to be seated. And during the prayers, we will be praying for different parts of our body. And so I invite you as we pray for those different parts uh, to, to touch them. One of the, the first ones I think is our minds. So we'll start up here. Please pray for us, Russ. Steady and comforting God, with you every transition and new start is a reminder of your goodness. For you are always creating fresh, amazing things in us and through us. Though we are sad about summer's ending, we are grateful for this school year, especially this one, after all we faced, overcome, and released with the past year of COVID-19. We come to this year changed, with new levels of gratitude, hope, and connection carved in us. We appreciate the opportunity to learn and grow, knowing it is one of the best, biggest privileges we have. And the gift of physically being with friends and teachers for this, for school this year, for those of us who are returning, feels like a holy hug. With thanks and love, we now offer everything we are to you, asking for your blessing. We pray as and for students of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds. We pray for our hearts and all they hold, excitement and nervousness, disappointment and hope. We give you all our loves and fears. We pray for steady self-esteem self -esteem and deepening resilience. Loving, Loving God, God, hold us, us and our, our prayers. prayers. We pray for our minds, that they will expand in wonder and celebration, learning not just from the books studied, but the people in our classes. Open our minds with the willingness to be changed in unexpected ways and settle our thoughts through loops in peaceful places. Loving, Loving God, God, hold us, us and our prayers. prayers. We pray for our hands, that they will reach out to help, welcome, and care. Bless our hands with patience and dedication as they grip pencils and type on keyboards, swish paintbrushes and clap in song, grip monkey bars and lunchbox handles, spin wheelchair tires and basketballs. Loving, Loving God, God, hold, hold us, us and, and our, our prayers. prayers. We pray for our mouths that they will speak words bringing life and connection. Help us use our mouths to honor the dignity and belovedness of all. Remind us to open our mouths for deep belly breaths when we're feeling anxious or afraid. Loving God, hold us and our prayers. We pray for our feet, that they will move toward those different from us and help others in safe ways. Plant our feet next to those who feel alone and bless our steps down hallways and sidewalks. We know you are with us wherever our feet go or stray. Loving, Loving God, God, hold us, us and our prayers. prayers. We pray for our eyes that they may see ourselves and others with compassion. Point our eyes toward those who are forgotten or struggling. Grow us in flexibility to see from all kinds of angles. 
bless what and how we see, whether we're looking at a screen, a whiteboard, or the beauty of a first person's face, and help us see with the most important eyes, the eyes of the Spirit within us. Loving, Loving God, God, hold us, us and our, our prayers. prayers. We pray for our ears, that they will genuinely listen to all voices, especially those that haven't been listened to much. When things get noisy, help us listen extra carefully for your voice. Help us hear with the most important ears, the ears of the Spirit within us. Loving God, hold us and our prayers. We say a special prayer for parents as the start of a new school year is always another leap of faith. Wrap them with your reassuring love as they entrust their children and trust in you. When questions remain unanswered and the realm of control is finite, bless them with peace and the promise you are right there with their child, whether heading to preschool or driving to college. Lord Loving God, God hold, hold us and, and our, our prayers. prayers. We also pray now for teachers, staff, and administrators. Bless these faithful servants with courage and confidence, knowing you are in their classroom with a steady hand on their shoulder. Give them peace, patience, and balance in the pressures they face, and bravery to build structures and systems which justly serve all your children. Give them delight in the young ones before them and, rec and recognition of the sweet ways children are also teachers. Loving, Loving God, God, hold, hold us and our, our prayers. prayers. We pray for health and wholeness, fun and growth, surprise and amazement for this school year ahead, knowing you will hold us all the way through. We thank, we thank you, God, God, and love you. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all of your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share with one another a sign not touching of God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. We will now be receiving our offering. If you missed the opportunity to put it in the uh, plate there at the back, uh, feel free to leave it in the mailbox on your way out. Um, we could not do this without your care and support. And thank you so much for your generous tithes and offerings. Uh, you can give online as well on our website or uh, drop off a check throughout the week in our mailbox. Thank you once again. Our offertory hymn is number 393, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Please stand.
Merciful God, receive all we offer you this day. Give us grace to love one another, that your love may be made perfect in us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you, and so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. And now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth. Oh, 
and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, this is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do this in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us sing together the Lord's Prayer. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. For those who are new to our practice here of late, uh, you are invited to remain in your seat, and we will bring the communion in one kind to you. We don't share the common cup but uh, we will bring the bread to you. If you would prefer not to receive, feel free to just cross your hands over your chest and uh, those of us coming will know uh, to pray for you, or pray a blessing rather than offering you communion. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Our communion hymn is number 179.
Tree of Life and Awesome Mystery, and we will be doing verses 1 through 5 and 6a if you're following in the hymnal.
Almighty God, you renew us at your table with the bread of life. May your holy food strengthen us in love and help us to serve you in each other. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to invite any kids who are present or anyone who is going back to school uh, to come up to the front. Um, so I'd like you to, the kids, you can have a seat right here on the floor. I'm going to be here. And uh, we're trying out some, some new things now that we're getting back to having kids present, which is awesome. Uh, we want people to feel comfortable either being um, on the camera or off the camera. Uh, he, hi, buddy. I am on the camera here, and those who are kind of down that step aren't really going to be seen on camera. So any parents um, who would like to keep their kids off camera are welcome to just have them come down here. It is so good to see you guys and to be able to pray for you today. I am wondering if uh, you guys would be willing to share with me a little bit about what's happening for you this year, what you're going to be going into, if it's a grade at school, and how you are feeling about that. And I want you to use your thumbs. So if you're feeling good about going back to school, give me a thumbs up. If you're feeling okay, you can do it like a sideways thumb. If you're feeling like, ah, I don't know about the school stuff, you can go like this, okay? How, how about you guys? Thumbs up, thumbs down, in between. Yeah, we got, we got some thumbs up, some sideways, some thumbs down. That is good, yeah. And some high fives, right, Derek? High five. Yeah. I have a little prayer I'm going to pray for you guys. Just give me a second here. So some of you received a little bag tag craft, and you were able during the service to color it and then to seal it in the little tag thing that I, I gave you. Can I use yours as an example, uh, Chigozi? So uh, for those of you at home, uh, these are a, a self-laminating uh, tag, luggage tag. And when you guys get home, you can feel free to like use scissors and trim it a little bit closer. I know it is a little large, uh, but feel free to do that and it'll still stick and stay together. So may these tags remind you that God is always with you as you sit and as you stand, as you learn and as you play in every fear and every celebration. May you know God, your friend, is always there. And they say, God's got your back. So as you have these on your backpack this year, every time you see it, you say a little thank you to God for being there with you going through those ups and downs of your schooling. So let, why don't we start over here and we'll say our name and what grade we're going into. Would that be all right? I know your name is Claire, right? Yeah, and what's, what grade are you going into? Grade one, that's a big step, hey? Going every day. Yeah, that's exciting. Awesome. Well, may God bless you as you go into grade one and give you courage and a wonderful time meeting lots of friends and learning lots of good things. And Carson, what grade are you going into? Grade three, that's a great year. And uh, were you one of the thumbs up people? Yeah, you're feeling good? Well, may God bless you and keep you as you seek to follow his will and to learn and to grow each step of your way each day in grade three. Yeah. And how about you, Taletta? What grade are you going into? Grade three as well. We have grade three buddies here. And how are you feeling? Where was your thumb on that? Kind of sideways, yeah. Well, Lord, we, we ask you to bless Taletta. May it be an awesome year. Help her to uh, feel your presence each day, walking with her 
that she might walk in the fullness of your spirit and enjoy her time, even though there might be some, some scary parts, we ask you to grant her faith and courage. Amen. And this is Chazaram, right? Yeah, Chazaram. And you are uh, visiting your grandma and grandpa, aren't you? And your cousins and aunt and uncle. And you are in Medicine Hat, right? Yeah, and what grade are you going into? Grade three, another grade three. That's awesome. How are you feeling about it? So kind of a sideways thumb as well. Well, Lord, we ask your blessing upon Chazaram. We thank you for bringing her here to worship today and uh, her loving family that she's a part of uh, here in Swift Current and a part of our congregation here when she visits. We ask your blessing upon her as she goes into grade three. May she learn all the good things that you have set out for her and get to know who you have created her to be each day. Bless her with lots of good friends uh, to make that thumb tilt in the upward direction. Amen. And this is Chagozi. Chazaram and Chagozi did awesome readings at their little cousin's baptisms a couple of weeks ago. And Chagozi, what grade are you going into? Grade one, that's awesome. We have two grade ones, three grade threes. Yeah, so were you, where were you on the, the thumb scale? You're a thumbs up, well, that's good. And uh, we thank you, Lord, for Chagozi and uh, the good work that you're doing in him each day. We thank you for the man of God you are creating him to be and the purposes to which you have called him in grade one in Medicine Hat. Bless him and fill him with your spirit. Amen. Erica, yeah, we're, you were a thumbs up, I think, right? Yeah, you've got a big transition going into grade eight, right, at the comp? Grade nine. Is it grade nine at the comp where it starts? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a little bit of a change in class size, I'm guessing, from Stuart Valley. Yeah. Well, Lord, we ask your blessing upon Erica in this awesome time of growth and maturing, step, stepping into the comp and all the exciting friends and learning that you have set out for her. We ask that you would bless her and give her uh, eyes to see, ears to hear, heart to, to feel uh, your Holy Spirit within her each day. Amen. And Jesse, you were kind of a sideways thumb, right? Yeah, a little, little, little wobbly there going, going into Stuart Valley. Well, you guys have uh, the same people in your class you've had for quite a while, right? Yeah. You know what you're getting yourself into, maybe. That's why it's kind of wobbly. Yeah. Well, God, we ask your blessing upon Jesse as he uh, seeks your will there in, in Stuart Valley, as he seeks to follow your path for him, as he seeks to get to know those people that he has deep relationships with better and grow in you and in your truth as he learns many things in school this year. Bless his mind in Jesus' name. Amen. And I know my kids are watching online. They're logged in. Uh, they are at Camp Harding uh, for a few different reasons this week, but they're logged in online, and uh, they are going into uh, grade six and grade four and so uh, we're very thankful for the opportunity to send them back to school. I know my wife definitely is. They've been home uh, doing online school the last year. So I want to pray for Graham and Lucas. Lord, that you would bless them with uh, confidence as they get back into live in-person school. May they have lots of great friendships um, restored, some who, who they know from two years ago and others that surely they will come to know over this year. Uh, bless them in their classes, in their learnings, and their maturing each day, following your spirit. Amen. And I'm not Can you hear us? Oh, there's Krista. This looks like we've got, uh, I'm wondering if Ray, Can you hear us? Uh, turning on, maximizing on the screen there, uh, Krista's um, picture. The little talking thing, if you click on that and then do the second thing, the sec, yeah, that'll work. And then scroll, uh, carry it up, slide it up. Are you, uh, do you have your video on, honey, or is it a, a bad connection? Turn it on. It says you can't start your video because the host has stopped it, but that's okay. That's okay. Just want to say hi. 
Love you yeah. all. And we, we, uh, thanks for the prayer. We're going to get our tag when we get home. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, is there anyone else, uh, logged in? I, yeah, I, I uh, didn't see before I, the service. If anyone was logged in, uh, Lennis, do you know if any other families? No. Okay. Well, God bless you all. And, uh, uh, I'm very excited for you. I remember uh, the apprehension and excitement when I was a kid coming into school. And so I'll be continuing to pray for you. And more information about Sunday school and uh, different things like that will be coming this week. So keep your ears and eyes and your parents' emails posted. You guys can uh, go and be seated with your families again. Thanks for coming up. And we do have a couple of announcements, not too many today. Uh, we do have coffee hour today. Please stick around after the service. Thank you to Carol Wells, who uh, hosted today. We have a sign-up sheet in the hall. If you are interested and available to put on the coffee uh, before our church so that we can have a coffee hour visiting time after the service, uh, please sign up your name. Choose one of the Sunday dates that are on that list. And if you need help, if you've never done it before, we are happy to show you how to do that. Uh, you don't need to bring anything um, other than just the willingness to, to get the coffee ready. But if you wanted to bring a cookie or something, you're welcome to, but it's definitely not required. Uh, there is coming up a opportunity to learn about the stewardship of creation called listening to the land. And so this is, we are in the season of creation, the green season, and there is a free webinar panel presentation that our Anglican Church is putting on on Thursday, September 16th, and it's called Listening to the Land. And we have a number of different panelists participating in it. Bishop Chris Harper from the Diocese of uh, Saskatoon will be a part of it, and uh, a few other folks. Uh, if you'd like more information, please reach out to our office or to me. Happy to hook you up. It's in our TGIF News newsletter. If you are not receiving this on Fridays, uh, please send us an email or text, and we would love to include you on that. There's also a uh, <clears throat> cartoon my brother sent me uh, in it. So I'm not sure if you, you saw it, but it's got a, uh, a picture of this huge axe chopping into a house. And it says, and there's two guys standing out front of the house, and it says, let's see, oh, oh, there, here it is. Your policy does not cover floods, earthquakes, or acts of God, A-X-E. Sorry about that, Mr. Finkelman. <laughs> well, that is all of our announcements for today. Oh, actually, Val does have one more. Uh, we are going to have a uh, uh, work bee tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. If you are available and uh, willing to help out with a, a, a small amount of labor. Uh, we are going to be cleaning up the flower beds uh, for the fall. And I'm not sure what else is on the agenda, but uh, usually it doesn't take a whole lot of time and it's nice to come out and be active together in person as I was praying about. So thank you Val for coordinating that. More information also about uh, the reconvening of our ACW uh, group and uh, there was another one you were talking about, Needles and Matter. Uh, we'll be coming shortly on TGIF, so stay posted. Our recessional hymn is number 450, You Call Us Lord to Be. Please stand.
children, families, and all who love them. Go out into the beautiful world that God has made. Go and play, go and learn, go and love others. May you be filled with loving kindness for yourself and everyone around you. May the prayers of your faith community keep you safe, healthy, and full of joy. Amen. Amen.